Hey everybody, Digital Sticks here, and uh, I'm coming at you from a uh, from the, using a CV1 with a a different gaming headset. So this microphone is not a CV1 mic, uh, <coughs> but I'm also not, I'm not recording from the PC I'm using. I'm recording using Elgato Capture on my main PC, while this is actually my old PC, which I hate to call it an old PC because it never was like my tried and true had forever gaming PC. I barely had this one put together when I VR caused me to recognize that I wanted something better uh, for VR going forward that was going to last a while. So, but anyways, it's still, it is the PC that I upgraded from regardless. Uh, it is an i5 fourth generation processor, has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and right now I'm coming at you using the CV1 in VR chat from a 770, or GTX 770. And that's the point of this video. With the current situation with GPUs, there's almost no way around uh, getting burned in one way or another on pricing. So what are people that are wanting a gaming PC supposed to do right now? And specifically, if you're wanting it for VR, what should you do? Uh, well, the, uh, the reality is, for strictly VR, uh, if you can't get a, your hands on a decent GPU to run VR fully and properly, then the Quest 2 for the simpler VR games is going to be your most solid VR experience that's available uh, at a retail price. As far as I know, the Quest 2 is still obtainable in stock. Uh, if it starts to get scalped, do not get it. Uh, but if it's still available at its original price and you're just wanting VR, and you can't build a gaming PC right now, that's going to be your best option. You are going to have to put up with Facebook accounts. You are going to have to put up with spyware. And pretty soon you'll have advertising on the device. And you will have titles and portions of games that you cannot play standalone without a PC. So you're still going to want the PC as you go forward. But you get quite a bit of VR that you can enjoy now. Assuming, presuming you get it at retail, that you don't have to get scalped to enjoy. So uh, I'm not as bullish by any means on the Quest 2 as other channels. I think the hype is of the device is overrated. I think some of the things being ignored or or whatever are are being done so improperly. Uh, not I don't think it's all honest. Uh, and a large part of that is because the people that are doing these reviews are enthusiasts and they know what made them enthusiasts. The Quest 2, uh, for the vast majority of them, doesn't have it. And that is self-evident by them still using index kits as their go-tos. The fact that they don't give the full story uh, is telling. And you should see a lot of things that are done regarding a Quest 2 that are not done with other headsets. A prime example is just about any time the Quest 2 is being discussed, uh, before someone will discuss negatives about it, they first got to discuss the negatives about all other headsets, primarily the index. So I'll be like, oh, it doesn't have, you know. But they don't do that in turn. If they're discussing the negatives of the index, they don't then turn around and discuss the negatives of the Quest 2 also. So there is a slant. Uh, and part of that is because that's what people want to hear. They want this device to be good. So anyways, that's going on. Um, so a lot of my content covers that. But I'm not opposed to somebody who can benefit from the Quest 2 and who truly fits as their best option from enjoying that option and getting it. So in this current climate with GPUs being an issue, uh, Quest 2 is a good consideration for somebody that's not able to build a gaming PC at a reasonable price because they can't get hardware at retail. But I'm testing a GTX 770, and if the Quest 2 could do basic experiences, why even bother with this? Well, you can find these cards right now for about 100 bucks, and that is not outrageous. That's about... You know, it's twice what they probably would go for if it weren't for the current situation. But you're paying a $50 premium to get a hold of a pretty capable GPU. 
you can do some quality 1080p gaming with this GPU, especially if you're putting it with a capable CPU. And right now, uh, I've done some tests, and I'm going to do a second video to help to cover uh, my opinions on some of these other tests. I'm not going to just benchmark it and then flash benchmark. I mean, anybody can run benchmarks and then make a video showing the benchmarks. That's already done left and right on all kinds of things. It's somewhere back, in the, somewhere in there, someone's asked the question: Is the 770 still a viable GPU in 2020, 2021? So be it. And they've run the standard specs. I'm going to just simply play these games, kind of comment on them, comment how it feels, and give an opinion on that because that's what really matters. Not if it happens to be playable under certain circumstances, but <coughs> is it an experience that somebody would actually enjoy or see that it, it's useful? You know, and um, so in that regard, I think I've got a pretty good opinion there as far as. Uh, I, I can, I'm not so spoiled that I'm on 4K ever, really, uh, that I, I couldn't appreciate a playable experience when I saw one. I'm not going to, you know, uh, even, even in VR, I'm able to appreciate that this is a pretty good resolution and experience right now in VR chat, even though my main headset now is the Index, and I use that on a 1080 Ti, and I can super sample an index, which is already at a higher resolution, this is still great. Uh, and the CV1, specifically, is far more comfortable than a Quest. If you find a good solid kit that doesn't need anything, maybe you want to find some kind of cover so that if you do, if you sweat, you can deal with that, you know. But otherwise, as far as comfort and enjoying it, <coughs> you can out of the box or out of the bag or whatever you buy your re <laughs> your second hand CV1 kit in. You could also do this experience with a Vive. One thing of note is apparently, even though display ports are on the card, they don't work, at least not in the fashion that's necessary for VR headsets that require display ports. I've seen someone try to test a 760 and they weren't able to use it with a Rift S because of the display port. I tried to test this with my index. I also could not get the index to work because of the, the display port. So, uh, if any VR headset first gen that uses an HDMI port is a good consideration. This also should work pretty well with, um, with Link. Either Link or, um, or Virtual Desktop or Air Link. Whichever method you want, uh, your experience should be comparable to what it is uh, playing, just using this directly for VR. One thing of concern, I guess, there would be, you know, is the the, the power needed for the compression going to take away when you're GPU limited already? Uh, I'm not. I don't think it does, or it's not substantial. But that is why I'm capturing this on another PC because. This this uh, setup is certainly not likely to handle streaming or recording at the same time it delivers a playable experience. But that said, I've tested it already in several games, and I'm going to go back through and actually record thoughts on these and, and do that again. Uh, if you comment down below with something you'd like to see tested, I could take that into consideration. I have DSL, so uh, this is not my main PC. I'm having to download games as I think of them, and it takes time, it takes planning. So, you know, but in general, I just want to capture what it's capable of and, and just demonstrate, demonstrate its potential value and all of that. And then your experience could vary a little bit, but you should be able to get a good enough idea that can most likely transfer to any games you're interested in. Okay, so again, why not just simply buy a Quest 2 and have basic level VR and not worry about the PC uh, in the meantime, simply because it's not available? Well, the Quest 2 cannot run desktop games. And that's a big, addi a massive additional value to a gaming PC. Even VR chat, which is most enjoyable in VR 
it's still available on desktop. And this 7070 GTX can play it very well on desktop if it's matched with a decent GPU. You can't play the desktop version, you can't play the PC version with the Quest 2 standalone. So having a gaming PC will give you better options in VR chat. Now, you know, you ideally want to be in VR, I'm sure, but you can still go to any experience and be a participant in anything as a desktop player. You can't necessarily do that as a Quest 2 player. In fact, there's no reason to even word it that way. You can't as a Quest 2 player. And the, the, most, the things that PC players most enjoy are generally not in cross-play worlds or in cross-play situations. Uh, as far as uh, definitely like the club environments, things like that, the established VR chat players. Uh, so with a PC that can play it in desktop mode, even if it struggles a little bit in VR mode, you still have options there that you won't have with the Quest standalone. Now, a lot of PCs can run VR chat in desktop mode. They might struggle or whatever, um, but they could probably get it done. I mean, my school laptop could run it in 720p and it'd be playable at 20 something frames of both situations. Not ideal by any means, but it's doable. So, so even with the Quest 2, you know, as far as just VR chat goes, <coughs> you may already have a laptop capable of giving you a playable experience or whatever. Um, but with this, you would actually have a quality desktop experience. So where you're lagging in your Quest 2, you can then turn around and actually enjoy the, at least the desktop with a quality frame rate and quality settings and all of that. So there's still the advantage goes to having an actual gaming PC for virtual for VR chat in uh, desktop mode even. But but it's actually as I'm using it right now, there are plenty of scenarios where it's actually usable in the game in VR as well and probably uh, if you could, you could probably do it well in any world that you could run well in a Quest 2 uh, standalone, you can have that experience just as well with more options on the table with this setup. So you actually, uh, so you you will discuss you, by being able to go into the PC worlds, you could probably find a lot more scenarios where you get really lagged and it doesn't work that you but you're only discovering things that you don't even get a chance to attempt on a Quest 2 standalone. So there's a, there's a lot of reason to strongly consider a GPU that's capable of VR, even if it's not the ideal GPU, and even though the Quest 2 exists. Okay, uh, but then the, the not just VR chat though, uh, for me, my favorite game uh, that's outside of VR is Wreckfest, and I tested that, and I wasn't sure. I I'd, I'd never actually played Wreckfest on anything but my main PC, uh, and it actually was very well. It played very well on this setup. <coughs> I just left the default settings, so everything wasn't altered out or anything. But it was pretty high settings. They're medium to high on everything that was settable, and I didn't actually see what the actual frame rate was, but I was playing on a monitor that was capable of 72 hertz, but most likely was running at 60. And in any case, no noticeable issues with the refresh rate. So Wreckfest worked very well, very solid game. I, I don't think I'd be left wanting if, if I was strictly desktop gaming and that was still my main game or whatever, I'd be having a good time, a quality time. And uh, it would only be better if I'd had my wheel hooked up, but I'm not transferring that over. You know, that's, that's additional work that uh, I'll need some Patreons to uh, fund, and I don't even have Patreon set up. So, okay, so anyways, so these other tests are coming, other viewpoints are coming. Um, but also another game I played that you can't play on a Quest 2 standalone or otherwise, uh, well, you can play it, Food link or whatever, but as a standalone, is Aces High, and that's because Aces High is a desktop game with VR support added. Well, I knew this PC because that's why this PC exists to begin with was to play Aces High. 
I knew it could handle Asus High desktop mode 1080p very well. Uh, it actually can keep a 1080p 144 hertz monitor like I have pegged at 144 hertz in Asus High desktop mode. But translating that to VR, what was it going to look like? And uh, I didn't, I don't have the actual frame rates, but it, it felt good, it played good, it worked out pretty well. Again, the biggest thing I was missing was my HOTUS, so I could actually get all into it. So, uh, but anyways, there's a desktop game with VR support, and this is capable of running it. So that would be interesting to try that then with something like um, a set of Corsair or something like that. But that's a more demanding game altogether than Asus High, so it would not surprise me if that doesn't work out well with this setup. But maybe that's a test that could come later. Uh, the, but the final thoughts on this is basically before the GPU shortage that we're dealing with now, uh, people that have tested this and other below spec hardware for VR, in general, the consensus was they were discovering some playable circumstances, some usefulness, but it wasn't anything that would be worth recommending buying the card for. Was it, you can't solidly recommend that people cut corners with the 770 and on VR. There's no way to, there's no reason to do, do that. And basically it was only serving to let people who already had that hardware know that they could still consider VR if they wanted to as their next step, uh, even if they couldn't upgrade their GPU right away or whatever. So it's letting people that already had the stuff know whether or not they could explore VR with the equipment they had. Uh, but it wasn't really revealing anything that was worth somebody chasing and putting together deliberately. Because uh, under normal retail prices and everything, uh, by the time you build a PC with the 770 and everything, you weren't very far away at all of building a true VR-capable PC. Uh, but we're not in those normal times anymore. And, and so right now, since you can get a GTX 770 for $700 fairly easily and reliably, that's a basically roughly a $50 markup over what the GPU would be worth currently uh, under normal circumstances. So that's not too bad of a uh, premium to play, pay. And if you can handle living with 1080p desktop gaming and, and just to select a few VR experiences, whatever works, but, you know, you just kind of explore and see. The, the 770 is a strong consideration uh, in this market. And I'm going to share more information and results and thoughts on, on the way other things play in the next video. Uh, and so hopefully you'll see that and it can help you make any additional decisions you're trying to make. Uh, but yeah, this is not the go-to uh, GPU to recommend for under any circumstances, but uh, when it comes to value and budget and getting something instead of nothing in this current circumstance that we're in with the GPUs, uh, that's where this shines as a, a, a an option well worth considering so i'm digressing of course uh this is again not take number one so if you've watched this far thank you if you're watching this far then maybe i'm making some kind of interesting points or presentation that i would hope you'd consider subscribing uh, also again uh, comment down below on anything you'd like to test any questions you have that maybe by you can tell that I should probably know the answer to as a result of anything that I show. Uh, and I'll certainly share that information and make this as informative as possible. Uh, but it's kind of fun to have something worth making some new content about as well. I'm not buying every last and latest gadget that I don't need just to make reviews uh, because it's not my goal to compete with anybody else on their level. Just simply continue to be informative and helpful with the content that I do create. So I'm out. Thank you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the next one uh, that's going to feature more content from the 770. And take care.